Today I'm going to talk about stripping rubber. This is a process that is done primarily when you're flying indoor duration model airplanes like penny planes or science olympiad planes in order to match the rubber to the prop. This is very important for achieving the highest flight times. I'm holding the Harlan rubber stripper here which is one of the most popular rubber strippers out there. There's also the OP Guard and the Johnson. Uh, I don't think any of these is currently being manufactured. You have to find them used on the internet and purchase them. Valari Products does have uh, rubber strippers for sale from time to time. JH Aerospace also has a 3D printed rubber stripper, which is a lot less expensive, but probably less accurate, but in many cases would do the job. The reason for uh, stripping rubber is that you oftentimes will end up with a situation where a standard width of rubber will not give you the highest flight times. Rubber is normally sold in 1 16th, 1 8th, 3 32nd, I missed that, uh, 3 16ths, and in rare cases, 1 quarter inch widths. Um, it's important to understand that commercial rubber uh, varies in thickness, typically from about 0 0.040 inches to about 0.044 inches. Expert indoor flyers who fly penny plane, F1D, A6, F1L, etc., uh, rely upon the density of the rubber motor. So once they've determined the optimum weight for their model airplane, they will experiment with rubber and go by density in terms of grams per inch. Um, novice flyers, particularly those in Science Olympiad, will just uh, use the width, the nominal width of the rubber, if they are fortunate enough to be able to strip rubber. The alternative to stripping rubber is to vary the pitch of the prop. That requires a custom prop and repitching with a pitch gauge. It's a very complex and delicate operation to ensure that both blades are identically pitched and so forth. So I'm going to give a demonstration of how the Harlan rubber stripper works. Um, you can see it's got a rectangular frame. It's got a crank. It has a couple of cylinders that have steel cutting blades on them. And here you can see it has a couple of what we call fences. These fences provide a gap in the middle through which the rubber passes. And you adjust these knobs to change the position of the side walls of those fences relative to the cutting blades. And that determines uh, the width of the two segments that your rubber is stripped into. I want to um, give you an example here. I have a segment of 3 16th tan Supersport rubber, TSS rubber here. And you can see I've adjusted the fences so that the rubber will go in. It's important here that the fences be snug against the sides of the rubber so that you don't end up with uneven edges and therefore non-uniform width. But if you tighten it up too tight, um, I'm out of focus there, or out of frame. If you tighten it up too tight, it won't be driven when you pull the crank. It won't be driven through. So I think I've got it about the right uh, width there. So let's crank and see what happens. Okay, you can see that we're splitting into two segments of rubber. Let's go ahead and complete the process here. I don't want to drop these because I'm on screen. There, we've completed it. So we've got two. Our single segment of rubber has been stripped into two segments. Let's go ahead and measure the width of each one and see what we ended up with. Here I have a digital thickness gauge. These are available on Amazon for about $29. Let's turn it on, zero it out. Let's measure it here. 
You don't want to squeeze too hard or too light. 0 0.089. So I have stripped a 0 0.089 inch wide segment of rubber from that 3 16th inch wide section of standard width rubber, which uh, decimal equivalent is about 0.187. So let's measure the other segment. Point one oh four. So if you add those two together, actually point one oh one. Uh, I'm getting a little bit. Yeah, let's call it point one oh one. If you add those two together, you should come out with a digital equivalent of about three sixteenths. So again, you would repeat this process, adjusting the size of that gap with these dials relative to those blades. And then ultimately, when, once you get the rubber width that you desire, you would then strip a longer segment that would give you the weight of the rubber motor you're seeking. In the case of uh, this year's flight event for Science Olympiad, you would go for uh, something close to two grams. And uh, I'll do a, uh, a video on how to tie a rubber motor so that you don't waste rubber and you get as close to the target weight as you want. For example, um, two grams. And that's all for now.